Yes, sir. All right, let us pray. Merciful Master, Almighty God, in heaven, again, we thank you, dear Lord, for yet another opportunity to come together and study a portion of your word. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for this uh, opportunity. We're thankful for all that you have given us. We pray that you continue to be with us and help us grow, dear Lord, so that we may spread your word. Master, we pray that you instill in us an extra measure of courage and, 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 and uh, wisdom so that as we walk this path called life, that we may uh, be able to touch someone with your word, that they may change their minds from which uh, one direction and head in the other towards you, dear God. We, we pray that you continue to be with us uh, individually and collectively, uh, that we may serve you with a full heart, dear God, glorifying and magnifying you always. Uh, be with those who are here this evening and those who aren't able to make it. And dear Lord, bless all the sick and shut in, uh, Felder and Franks and the Oliver's and all of those who are mentioned, dear God. My mind isn't sharp enough to remember all those, but you know, dear God. Amen. Bless us as only you can, dear Lord. Uh, bless the family that has uh, lost a young man, and, and I believe it was uh, Tennessee, dear God. Mm -hmm. uh, bless them and, 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 and comfort them as only you can. Master, please uh, be with those who are going through struggles and trials and tribulations, dear Lord. Uh, help them and, and comfort them as well. Uh, draw them closer to you in these trying moments, dear Lord. Uh, for we know you can deliver uh, men out of any situation, dear Lord, and circumstance. And Father, we, we ask uh, again uh, that you... Help us overcome the fiery darts of Satan. Uh, be with me tomorrow uh, and our congregation, dear Lord, as we strive to do your will your way, as well as the many other congregations throughout the world uh, that, that you own. These are many of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother uh, Henry, for that prayer. Again, I'm going to ask you all to mute your mics if you're not talking uh, so we don't get feedback. And again, this is all of our study. I'll say that for those who are just signing in. And so uh, you have an opportunity to ask any questions that you might have concerning the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, the first question is going to come from Luke 6. I want you to turn to Luke 6 for those who are just signing in. And the question is going to uh, be, are there apostles today? And if not, how can you prove it? You know, are there apostles today? And if not, how can you prove it? I'm going to go to Luke chapter 6 and first of all see uh, where the 12 apostles were chosen uh, that we find for the first time in the Bible. In Luke 6, beginning at verse 12, and it came to pass in those days that he went out, talking about Jesus, into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And so Jesus prays all night before we see him about to do what he does in verse 13 and following, and that is choosing his apostles. And when he had, and it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose, notice this, he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles, Simon, whom is named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which was the traitor. And so we find here that Jesus comes on the scene and what he does after praying all night, he chose 12 men and that he would call apostles. Now that word there is, is a word that means ambassador. Uh, these are ones who are, are sent on a, on a special mission in this sense. When you talk about apostleship and we're talking about an office. Now, no time in the Bible do you and I ever find that any individual appointed himself to be an apostle. Anyone who is considered uh, or hold or held the office of an apostle, they were specifically chosen by God himself. Now, remember, after Judas committed suicide, betrayed Jesus, committed suicide, go to Acts chapter 1. I want you to go to Acts chapter 1. And Acts chapter 1. Every man that held the office of an apostle uh, from the time we see Jesus shows them here in Luke chapter 6, these are men that uh, had to have spent three years 
uh, with Jesus. Make sure you get that. To be an apostle, uh, the qualification was that you spent three years with Jesus to hold this office uh, of an apostle. And so after Judas commits suicide, you know, there's 11 here. Jesus, by the time we get to Acts chapter 1, uh, I want you to see this in verse number 15. Uh, uh, Jesus has died, buried, uh, rose, walked the earth for 40 days, stepped on a cloud, and he went into the heaven. He's at the right hand of God when we get to Acts 1 15. And the Bible says, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. And so now let me stop here. Verse 15 is connecting with verse 14. Uh, he's not talking about just the 11. He's talking about when the men and the women, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, all these people are together praying uh, in an upper room. Okay, this is what uh, Luke is making reference to in Acts 1 and 15. Now look what Peter does in the midst of this people that was numbered about 120. He stands up, that's Peter, and he says, Men and brethren, this scripture must need have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, Falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch that the field is called in their proper tongue, al Sadema, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. I'm going to stop there. Now, what Peter does is Peter goes back to the Old Testament. He stands up in the midst of to these disciples, he, he goes back to the Old Testament, Psalms 69 and verse 25, and also uh, Psalms uh, 109. He uses this verse as well, Psalms uh, 109, and I think the verse is about number 5. You have to, I'll, I'll look this up in just a minute, but he uses these verses to put together that there has to be somebody that's going to take, that's going to take Judas's place, okay? So, this is, he, 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 he does this by by understanding the scriptures. His mind is open to understand the scriptures, okay? And so in verse 21, he says, Wherefore these men, which have company with us all the time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto the same day that he was taken up from us, let's get the difference, must, you got to underline that word in verse 22, must, because the question is, how do we know that no one today can be an apostle? How do we know that there are no apostles today? Well, because verse 22 lets us know that must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. The idea behind that verse is it has to be somebody who has spent three years with Jesus. Make sure you get that. The qualifications for an apostle, the office of an apostle, I'm going to clear, I'm going to qualify this. The office of an apostle, the qualification must be that this man must have spent three years in the ministry of Jesus after his baptism. Okay? Now, nobody said, must be one ordained to be a witness of us of his resurrection. Now, in verse 23, they appointed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. Now, all they did was pick men that had been in the presence of Jesus for three years. From the time that he's been baptized who came in and out among them that's all they're choosing is the individual that met the qualifications in verse 22 but they themselves never are going to pick which one of them it is that choosing is going to be left up to god now look with me verse 23 and they prayed and said you lord acts 124 which know the hearts of all men show whether of these two you have chosen. See, just like we read Luke 6, 13, Jesus chose those 12, including Judas Iscariot, whose heart Jesus knew as well. What Peter is saying is, Lord, we need you to choose. So Joseph, who, uh, 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 who's called for Sabbath, uh, uh, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias, which one of these men are going to take Judas's place. Look at verse 25, that he may be, may take part of this ministry, 
and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place and they gave forth their lots and the lot fell on Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 now there's 12 uh, apostles okay and so the point I wanted you to see uh, tonight is, is first of all is man never decided uh, on his of his own volition whether or not he would be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, that being said, go to Acts 9. Well, what about the apostle Paul? Let's go to Acts 9. Uh, first of all, let's go to Acts 9. Now, after, after uh, Jesus' picking and selection of the apostle here, uh, the 12, uh, the Lord is going to choose another apostle. And this apostle to the Gentiles is going to be none other than Saul. Now, we understand that Saul was a persecutor of the Christians prior to becoming one. Uh, Ananias is afraid uh, because he's heard how Saul had been persecuting those who were up the way. And you get to Acts 9 and look with me at verse number 10. I want you to see what the Lord, Jesus, who's in heaven, has to say to Ananias to get him to understand that Saul has a mission for him to do. Acts 9 and verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for Behold, we pray. Now I want you to notice here, there were other people in the Bible named Judas. And so, so here we have another individual whose name was Judah, which was a, a common name, uh, truth be told, among the Jews in that day. And, and, and had seen in a vision of a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered said, Lord, I've heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priests to buy all that call on your name. But the Lord said unto him, this is what I want you to see, Acts 9, 15. Go your way, for he is a, get this, chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So I wanted to read verse 15 to show you that even Saul, who later, the Apostle Paul, had to be chosen. He will be chosen by the Lord to become an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, that being said, go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. Now, remember, one of the things I said is that you have to have spent, to be an apostle, three years with Jesus. Now, remember, Paul's apostleship, and he's going to say this out of his own mouth, when you read 1 Corinthians 15, it is one that's out of due season. He, he says that it's out of due season. Although he's going to be an apostle, his spending time with Jesus is going to be out of due season. What does that mean? Well, he's not going to be a, an apostle uh, in the same season and in the same way that the other men were apostles. And that is spending three years with Jesus while he was here on earth. See, that was their season. It's a new season that when, when Paul will become an apostle because the season now is Jesus is in heaven. He's at the right hand of God. But even then, and Paul will spend three years with Jesus by revelation. Now, Galatians chapter, go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I want you to go there. Galatians chapter 2. Matter of fact, I want chapter 1. Let's go to chapter 1 first. Now, I want you to see, this is what Paul's argument is to the churches in Galatia. His argument is... My gospel that I'm preaching to y'all, it did not come from man. It, his argument, he is certifying to them that I am an apostle. Don't look down upon me uh, as if my words don't have the same weight as James, the brother of Jesus, and as Peter. And that's really what the book of Revelation, Paul has to deal with that because you've had some false teachers come in and they have some false teaching and they try to nullify the fact that Paul was not an apostle of Jesus Christ, that you cannot believe Paul's words. He's not as, his words are not as weighty as James and Peter. And so this is why Paul is showing that, hey, let me tell you something about putting men uh, ahead, of, ahead of God. I rebuke Peter. 
you know, he'll let you know. There was a time you talk about Peter. Let me tell you, when Peter was wrong, I rebuked him to his face. And I'm letting you all here in Galatians know about what I had to do with Peter back in Antioch. And so Paul is trying to get them to see, you cannot think of men uh, above that which was written. So look at Galatians 1 and verse 11. Now, look what he said, Galatians 1, 11. He said, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me, it's not after man. Look what he says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in a Jew's religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jew's religion uh, 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 above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Now notice what Paul is doing. Paul is trying to get them to see, he's arguing that, hey, I didn't choose this, it chose me. He's proven to them, I didn't choose to be an apostle, God chose me to be an apostle. Paul says, if anything, man, I was advancing in the Jews' religion. This was not something I was looking for. This is somebody that was looking for me. And so this is Paul's argument to them. But he says in verse 15, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I can for not with flesh and blood. You see what he says there? I didn't get this from man. I didn't go, go to it. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned up to Damascus. Now get verse 18. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. You see that? Paul is letting us know that I spent three years in revelation, by revelation, getting the information that I am delivering unto you from Jesus personally. My apostleship did not come from man, but it came, it came from God, okay? And that's what Paul, Paul is proving. No man ever made himself an apostle. Now, let me say this before we get to the next question. Now, I want us to understand the, the problem that a lot of people have with apostleship is, and, and the word apostle, you have to understand that this word uh, sometimes can be used generically. Uh, what I mean by that apostle, the word is simply uh, just one cent, you know, an, an ambassador, one cent. But when we're talking about the office of an apostle, we're talking about someone who has been specifically sent by God to do a work. I want to make sure we get that. See, you, that word can be used in a person that is sent by God to do a work. Let me, now go, to, go to Acts 13. Go to Acts 13. Acts 13. Acts 13. And this is where we cannot, this is where we cannot allow the denominational world to try to tie us up. You know, we, we're not afraid of the Bible. We're not afraid to speak the oracles of God and call things what they are. You know, just because they may abuse a word and not understand a word, it, it shouldn't give us fear uh, to still speak the oracles of God, you know, and, and, and be able to explain, you know, what God means uh, when he uses various words in the Bible. Now, Acts 13, 1 and 2. This is what I want you to see. Acts 13, 1 and 2. Now, there were in the church... That was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers. Now get this, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Okay, everybody see that? I wanted you to see Acts 13, verse number 1 and verse number 2. Now, the Holy Ghost, which I hope everyone only here understands, is God. He is, the, he is a person in the Godhead. He is now calling for people to separate Barnabas and Saul to do a special work for him. He is sending them out, God is, to do a mission. Now, why do I bring that up? Because now when you get to Acts 14, go to Acts 14, you have Barnabas and Saul who are going to Iconium. They're going into these, 
into these Gentile cities and they are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost said, separate me these two men because he has a special work for them. So this is why when you get to Acts chapter 14, I'll just read verse number one, but I really want to get down to verse four. Now, Acts 14, one, the Bible says that it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together. They together, he's talking about Barnabas and Saul. They both went together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jew stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds e evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, of old days, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Verse 4. But the multitude of the city was divided and part him with the Jews, and part, it says, he hears him with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews, which their rulers used them despitefully and to smoke them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra, the city of Lyconium, unto the region that lied about us, and there they, they preached uh, the, uh, the gospel. Okay, so now what I, I want you to see uh, saints is you're going to find in the scriptures where Barnabas is said to be an apostle. An, an apostle, let me find the, the, the exact verse. I mean, give me one second. I want to show you this. Give me one second here. Where, they, where, where you're going to find Barnabas will be called here an apostle uh, in the Bible. Yeah, verse 14. Drop down to verse 14 which when the apostles, notice what he says here, verse 14, Acts 14, 14, which when the, matter of fact, let me go back up to verse 13, because I want to see what they, what show you what they did here in Lystra. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands under the gates and would have done sacrifice for the people. Which when the apostles, get what it says here, Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent the clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sir, why do you these things? We also are men of like passion with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. So in verse 14, you'll notice here that Barnabas is made reference to as an apostle with Paul. Now the reason he's made reference to as an apostle, not in the sense that he is one of the 13, but the idea is he was now sent by God, by the Holy Spirit, to perform a different mission. He had a specific mission given to him by God, which in this sense, he is called an apostle, sent on a special mission. You know, it's like Hebrews 3, 1, and then we'll close, and I'll open up a question. Jesus is called an apostle. Jesus himself is an apostle in that sense. So again, that word, the reason we'll confuse a lot of denominational words is because that word is generic. It's like it's like the word deacon. You know, Phoebe in Romans 16 is called a deaconess. But that doesn't mean she held the office of a deacon. It's a generic word. She was a servant. So it's a generic word. But just because Phoebe in Romans 16 is called a servant, a deaconess, doesn't mean that she held the office of a deacon. Because the word is a generic word, like apostle, it can be a generic word, one who's sent uh, on a special mission. But there is no one today that holds the office of an apostle. Hebrews 3 1. Hebrews 3 1, I'll read this and then we'll open it up for questions. Hebrews 3 1, and all I want to show you here is that Jesus himself, one of the one of the attributes of Jesus is that he's an apostle as well as a high priest. Hebrews 3 1, wherefore, holy brother. Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle, notice that's capitalized, the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So remember, Jesus is called an apostle, he's called a high priest, he's even called a bishop. He's a bishop of our soul. Jesus was never married, Jesus didn't have any children, but yet he is still described in the in the generic sense of being a bishop or an overseer or a shepherd, okay? And so you have to keep 
the word in its context. So there are no apostles today. And we can prove that because there's no one today who has spoke with Jesus and spent three years with Jesus. And Paul's point of view, he's one, but he's one out of due season. Any questions, comments, or thoughts? Any other questions? Any questions, comments, or thoughts, even if it's not on this subject? Uh, Brother Henry, I, yes, I believe it's in, um, is it in Acts, no Acts, where Paul mentioned that he had mentioned uh, the, is it 1 Corinthians 15, I think it is, where he mentioned James and the, and the other apostles and the least, and, 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 he, and he made reference to I was the last of these. Was it 1 Corinthians 15? Yeah, I may have cut out. I, I'm not sure if you mentioned that. No, I just I didn't read it, but let me go ahead and read it. I, I made reference to it, but it's in First Corinthians chapter 15. You're exactly right, and uh, it's it's in, in uh, around verse seven and eight. Yeah, you can start with seven. Yeah. First Corinthians 15. You can start with seven because he, he he says this. After this, he was seen of James. Talk about Jesus here. After Jesus rose, he was seen of James. Then of all the apostles. Now this James was a pillar in the church. This is the same James who was the brother of Jesus. This is the same James who wrote the book of James. This is the same James in Acts chapter 15, which was the Lord's brother. So when Jesus rose, it's interesting here, he went to his brothers. He went to his brother, Judas, uh, that wrote the book of Jude. That's Jesus' brother. So after Jesus rose from the grave, he went, he, he went to his family. So this is what Paul is saying. After that, he was seen of James. Then of all the apostles, and last of all, get this, last of all, verse 8, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Uh, so General Jennings has lost his mind. Anybody else today uh, who are running around on YouTube, on TV, uh, claiming to be any type of apostle, an apostle today, okay? And yeah, there is no new revelation. There is no new special commission that God is giving to anybody today that can make them qualified to be an apostle, okay? Brother Green. Yes, sir. I also want to add a comment to what you're uh, teaching, Brother Stevenson, a great lesson, by the way. Um, also, you have women today that's running around calling themselves apostles. And as you were going through these scriptures and you were naming the apostles as we see in the scripture, and this is nothing against women or the sisters, but you never see a woman being named as an apostle, not even in the scriptures. So it puzzles me how they can try to call themselves apostles today. Yeah, yeah I guess the idea if I can break one scripture, I can break them all. I mean, might as well. You know, I mean, that's simply where they are. I can break one. I can break them all. People, they can do whatever they want to do. And so you're not going to hold the scripture as your standard of authority in all areas of your life and everything thing does go. I mean, you know, it's like the law. Paul says you're going to hold on to the law. And you offend in one point, you're guilty of all of it. And so, I mean, if you're going to go to hell, go all the way to hell. That's what I mean. You know, I mean, why not? You know, I'm gonna, if you're going to go, go all the way in. Don't have step. You know, don't take the shortcut. Try to do right in some areas and then and then be wrong in other areas. You know, that's crazy to me. I'm going to take some of the scripture. Still don't go to hell. But I'm going to take some of the scripture, try to obey that uh, uh, and do right by that. Uh, but then I'm going to do wrong over here in this area. And why would you do that? I mean, why would anybody do that? If I'm going to go to hell, I'm telling you, I'm going all in. I'm going in with gasoline underwear. That's how I'm going. I'm going to just let you know that. I'm going with gasoline clothes on. That's how I'm going. If I'm going. And he might as well, because if you're not going to do right, try to make efforts to have, have the scriptures to be your standard of authority. And don't act like you're holy in another part of it. You just you just can't you, you can't do that. God's not going to accept that. Okay, He's not going to accept it. Uh, any other question, comments, all? Any questions? Yes, sir. Um, I, I have something that I would like to mention. Um, I was having a conversation and. I want to go to uh, Matthew's chapter uh, 18 is where I, I would like to go at Matthew's chapter 18 and verse number 15, uh, where Jesus spoke and said, moreover, if my brother shall trespass against thee, uh, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If 
uh, he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Now, uh, help me with the scripture to understand. So, if somebody trespass against you, then you are to go to that person and let them know that they've wronged you. Am I correct in saying that? Because I've heard it said that uh, if a person do something wrong to you, you don't have to go to them, but you know, they should come to you. So, yeah, most definitely you have to, you have to, you have to go to them. And then I think the idea would be why would you go to them? Especially, you know, if, you know, if, if, if they've wronged you, the idea is, you know, they've hurt you in some way and they, and they sin. And our job, remember, brothers and sisters, is a, a ministry of reconciliation. You know, and if we really believe that people will die, you know, and go to hell if they die in their sins, why wouldn't you go to them? You, you, you see what I'm saying? If your brother shall trespass against you, go and tell him his fault. So you got to ask yourself a question. Can they go to heaven? Can they go to heaven if they're running around and 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 saying things that they ought not say, doing things that they ought not do, and you know about it, you keep your mouth closed. You know, and so you, you have the responsibility to go, you have responsibility to go, to go to them and try to remedy, rectify the situation because you want them to go to heaven. You want them to be saved. And they can't be saved if they if they die in their sins. So yeah, it's a it's a it's God has this thing, Brother Green, I know you know this. He has this thing so tied up that there is no excuse on, 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 for any party, whether you be, be the one that offended or the one that's been offended by having a mindset of being re reconciled. See, because here it's your brother trespass against you, okay? You, you, your brother has trespassed against you. You didn't do anything wrong in this in this sense. They've done the wrong. They're doing the wrong. You go to them. Now this is different than Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five. I want you to go there. We'll look at it. Maybe helping somebody else. Matthew five. Matthew five is you. You. You're the offender. See, you're the offender. God tied up both ends of this. Both ends of this is tied up here. In Matthew 5 and verse 21, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, you shall not kill, and whosoever shall, shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say you fool shall be in danger of hellfire therefore look at verse 23 if you bring your guilt to the altar and there remembers that your brother look what he says at all against you leave there your guilt before the altar go your way first be reconciled to your brother then come and offer your your gift and so God is, is tying this thing up. And the idea is unity. The idea is peacemakers. And, and the idea behind peacemakers is, it, it, and I want, I want to make sure we get this. It's not that you and I are trying to do everything for the sake of keeping peace here on this earth. I want to make sure we get that. When he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for I think he says they shall inherit the earth. They want to go to Matthew 5. I want to see this. How Jesus says that. I don't misquote it. But for they are the children of God. Matthew 5 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I love that. They shall be called the children of God. The idea behind a peacemaker is you and I are helping our brothers and sisters to make peace with God at the end of the day. See, you can't talk about, well, the idea, and you have saints that have this mentality that, well, just. Do whatever you can to get along, you know, uh, with people, even if it means sin. No, no, you're, you're wrong on that. You know, because the peace he's talking about is, is you want to do what you can, that people have the right peace with God, that when they die, they can make heaven their home. That's where the peacemaking come in. You know, you and I don't determine the conditions of peace. God does, okay? He determines the conditions of peace. So you go to your brother, not based on your feelings, not your thoughts, with the word of God. 
And when we do that, you let the chips fall where they may. And that's what makes you a peacemaker. Okay, that's what makes us a peacemaker. Uh, any other questions on that? Thank you, Brother Green. I hope that helped. Anybody have any other Bible questions? Any Bible questions? Any Bible questions? Yes, God bless you, Brother uh, Henry. Um, I have one uh, concerning uh, one of those one received the Spirit of God uh, after uh, after or during baptism. Now, we know Acts chapter 2, verse 38 speaks that uh, when Peter was talking to the 3,000, preaching to them, he said, let's uh, prepare to be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But there is a teaching that I heard over this past week that uh, basically I was teaching that uh, you don't receive uh, the Holy Spirit after baptism, and he based it on Acts chapter 8 and verse 14 through 16. Uh, I can read it here, and then after I read it, uh, maybe we can elaborate on, uh, I can talk back to you, Brother Henry, uh, uh, on this discussion of when do we receive the Spirit. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto him, them, Peter and John. Verse 15 says, Who, when they will come down, Prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And then verse 16 says, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So what that what they're basing it on, when I heard heard this guy teaching on that, that's when a person actually receives the spirit and they don't receive it at that to, or in other words, as the one that's Pentecostals teach, the tearing uh issue of so I'm going to turn it back over to you, so uh, let me elaborate more on that, bro. Okay, let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to go back to something that John uh, the baptizer said. This was brought up earlier today. I want to go to Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to look at verse 11 and verse number 12. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Now, brothers and sisters, we got to know that John the baptizer, going out into the wilderness to baptize, he didn't just decide and make up his mind, this is what I'm going to do, start dipping people in water. That was something that was given to him as a prophet from God to do. Uh, Mark 1.4, you can read it at your own leisure, teaches us that John was baptizing in the wilderness, preaching repentance and remission of sins. So you have to get that. When people were being baptized by John, they were receiving the forgiveness of sins, just like they were when they brought animal sacrifices to the temple. When they brought the right sacrifice with the right heart, God was forgiving them of their sins under the old covenant based upon what the father knew his son would do. Okay, we understand that. You still, under the dispensation of time that you live under, you still had to obey the commandments, the ordinances that was given by God. This is why Jesus, who had no sin, he got baptized. Why? So that it would fulfill all righteousness. What would, what would make it right? Because Jesus was not just God, he was man. 100% God, 100% man. And so since the Father said man gets baptized, Jesus said suffered to be so. Okay, so John comes on the scene in verse 11 of Matthew 3. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that coming after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bat. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Now, yeah, I want to make sure we, we see verse 11, there is a colon behind with fire. Why is that? It's not a period there. Because he's not, John's not through explaining what he means in verse 11. He's going to explain in verse 12 what he said in verse 11. What is the fire? Well, he 
said, when Jesus comes back, the fan is going to be in his hand. He's going to purge his floor. He's going to gather the wheat. That's the good stuff into the garner. That's the people who have been baptized by the Holy Ghost. And then he says, but he will burn up the shaft. That's the bad stuff with unquenchable fire. You do not want when Jesus comes back to baptize you with fire. This is always judgment language, okay? So this is judgment language. Now, so John the Baptist knew there was another baptism that was going to take place after his baptism that Jesus was going to give. And this baptism was going to be with the Holy Spirit. So you get to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. The reason I'm going slow through this, I know it's being reported. I know many of us, we already know this. But maybe there's somebody on here who don't know. And so we're going to explain it. Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. Now what happens is the Holy Spirit falls on. This is what I want you to see. He falls on the apostles as of tongues of cloven fire. And the apostles now do a miracle in Acts chapter 2. The miracle is they speak in tongues. That's the miracle. When the Holy Ghost fell on them, he empowered them to do a miracle. But John 20, 22 lets us know they had already received the indwelling of the Spirit when Jesus breathed on them. So Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit is not falling on them to save them. He's empowering them to do a miracle. Now, anyone who heard the message from the mouths of the apostles who are speaking in tongues, verse 37, Peter says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. They said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's going to tell them why. Why do they need to be baptized? For the remission of sins, and they're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see that? For the promise unto you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words that he testified and told saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now notice this. Peter is not telling them that they have to save themselves and they're not already saved. They're saved. They already have the Holy Spirit. Peter and the apostles and the 120, they're not going to have to get into the water because they are the ones who will breathe on to receive the indwelling in John chapter 20 after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But these people that he's speaking to are going to have to be baptized by Jesus with the Holy Spirit. And that happens when you get into the water. So go back to Acts 8, where Brother brother uh, Joyce left us at. So with this individual, what these guys don't understand is, receiving the indwelling of the Spirit, when you get in the water, Jesus resurrects your soul. He gives you life by baptizing you and I. If you're a member of the church, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but you and I can do no miracles. John the Baptist, again, was born with the Holy Spirit, did no miracles. Somebody will ask, well, who baptized John? God did. He was born with the Holy Spirit. That's who baptized. He was born with the Holy Spirit. God gave it to him. Okay? And so, in Acts 8, what happens here is the disciples, the apostles, the evangelists, they go to Samaria and they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And verse 12, back to Acts 8, when they believed Philip preaching a thing concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. I'm going to suggest to you and I, when they got baptized right here, they have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But they have done no miracles. Then Simon himself believed also when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracle signs which were done. So even Simon, who was a trickster, is doing no miracles. The Holy Spirit had no power. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. They're going to send, they're going to, why Peter and John? Because Peter and John are apostles. And it's the only the apostles, here's another reason why you know Geno Jennings is not an apostle. Because he can't lay hands on nobody to give him power to do a miracle. Geno Jennings cannot do one miracle. He will not drink any dignity poison, he knows he won't do it. He will not drink anything, and uh, and because he's not an apostle, uh, and so and so they're going to send for Peter and John 
who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now notice this, the content, when to receive the Holy Ghost. Well, if you understand truth, you know they already have the angel of the Holy Ghost. So he said they had received the Holy Ghost. He saw about the miraculous powers of the Holy Ghost. Nobody in Samaria has the miraculous power of uh, given to them by the Holy Ghost. So they're going to call for the apostles for the purpose of laying hands on them. And, and the Bible explains that in verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Just like he had fallen on the apostles in Acts chapter 2 and empowered them to do a miracle. This did not happen in Samaria. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then what happened in verse 17? Then laid they, they who, the apostles, their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So when the apostles laid hands on them, they saw something happen. There was a miracle that happened. You know how we know that? Because verse number 18 tells us, when Simon saw, y'all see that? When Simon saw, there was something he saw when the apostles laid his hands on him. That through the land of the, that they, the Holy Ghost was given, he said, give me also this power on so if I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost, okay? And so, you know, again, we don't have anything to be afraid of. Uh, these guys just don't understand uh, that you don't have to do a miracle in order to prove you have the Holy Spirit. We just believe the scriptures that when we get into the water, we don't see sins floating around in the water. Uh, when we get baptized, but we understand by faith and our obedience to the gospel that Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit who dwells in us and give us a new life. Once you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, thank you for that question, our brother Joyce. Any other questions, comments, or thoughts? And I just want to allude to that, uh, brother Stephen said I was a great teacher because the doctrine of carrying, uh, I, I would say, well, if that doctrine was true, well, according to the scriptures you just gave, well, if a person died before they received the spirit, we're going to teach the, the doctrine of tarrying. Well, if a person died before they received the spirit of God, they would actually be lost if we were to teach that doctrine. That's they, would actually, they would actually be lost because they had received the spirit, as you just mentioned. Amen. That's, that's, that's great teaching, my brother. That is that is that is great teaching. That's how one dad that got blessed. Great brother. teaching. Yeah. Any, any other brother Green? Yes, because uh, when you're baptized and you you obey the gospel, and you're baptized and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's being sealed, right? That's when you're being sealed with the Holy Ghost. Uh, so again, what? <clears throat> excuse me. Going back to what Brother Joyce has said. That if you if you haven't received the Holy Ghost and you're not sealed with Him through baptism, then of course you're gonna die lost. So I just want to add that little tidbit to what Brother Joyce was just saying. Amen. God bless you, brother. Are there are there any other Bible questions? Any other Bible questions for the night? Any Bible questions? No such thing as a dumb question. All right, saints. If not, then we're gonna wrap up for the night. Thank you all for being a part of this uh, Q and A. And again, remember, this coming Monday, we're going to be on Brother Green's Zoom page. We're in Zechariah. Great study. Zechariah chapter 10. And so I encourage you to study that book of the Bible. Be prepared Monday, 7 o'clock on Brother Green's Zoom page, Central Standard Time, okay? It's good to see Brother Robinson with us tonight. Good to have you all, Brother Coach V, and all you are on here tonight. I don't want to call my name and miss anybody. Brother Jared? Hey, Brother Henry, I'll give you yes, a after this. Yes, sir, my brother. Sure can. Sure can. Anybody have any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Well, if not, no other questions. Uh, Brother Sanders, can you take us up in a word, a word of prayer if nobody has anything else? Brother Sanders, are you in a position to pray? Okay. If not, uh, Brother Green, can I impose on you to go ahead? Uh, Brother Robinson, go ahead, Brother Robinson. Brother, let my Brother Robinson close us out in prayer, Brother, please. Oh, great study, uh, Brother. Um... Great study, man. Thank Great you, thank study. you, my brother. Thank yeah, you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank for Father God that we can come together as your children, Father, to study another portion of thy divine truth. <laughs> we thank you, O Father God, for the words that have come down from glory, Father. We thank you, O Father God, that we understand these concepts. We understand uh, uh, you have given us our understanding of 
what an apostle is and how one uh, is to hold the office of an apostle. We thank you, Father God, for your word, Father, because we know that there are so many doctrines going out here in this world, Father. But we just thank you, Father God, that you have given us the spirit because we have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have the spirit, Father, that we can understand those things which are spiritual, Father God, and that we can rightly divide the word of truth. We just ask you, oh, Father God, to continue to be with us, continue to be with the church, Father. We know, oh, Father God, you will always defend your kingdom, Father. We pray, oh, Father God, that we will be defending the kingdom. We just ask you, oh, Father God, that we pray, oh, Father God, that we might meet somebody along this way, Father, and tell them and, they, and, 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 and share with them those things that have been revealed to us uh, by the Spirit of God. We just ask you, oh, Father God, to continue to bless uh, brother uh, Stevenson, Father, in his studies. And bless us all, Father God, because we know, oh, Father God, we don't know everything, Father. But we pray, oh, Father God, you give us a willing man, a willing heart, and a willing spirit, Father, to receive those words that are written on the pages of inspiration. We just ask you, oh God, to continue to be with us, Father. You know, oh, Father God, we have troubles in our life. We have a tribulation in our life. And we know, Father God, that the devil is going all out, Father God, because he knows that his time is short. But we just ask you, oh, Father God, send us strength, Father, send us courage, Father. And we pray, oh, Father God, we stay in your word, Father, so that we can uh, develop our faith. We just ask you, oh, Father God, watch between me and thee and to the next appointed time. We ask you, oh, God, forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our shortcomings, Father. You know, Father God, we know, you know all about them, Father God, but we confess them this night, Father, because the scriptures say, Father, if we walk in the light as he in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And we just pray, oh, Father God, we stay in your fellowship uh, despite what men will say. And all these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Brother Green. Thank you, brother. Green. Thank you, brother. Green. Yeah, I just want to say real quick, uh, brothers, I ran into a gentleman today. Um, I was out walking the dog, and I ran into this gentleman today. And uh, I had Brother Sanders and Brother Coffee on the phone with me as I was talking to this guy. It just happened. So I'm asking you all, and I forgot to get his name, but I'm asking you all to pray for this gentleman. Hopefully something that was said from the Word of God pricks his heart and he obeys the gospel. No, I don't Thank you, brothers. Amen. 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 Amen.